Hello guys and greetings to everybody. My name is Vex Tejuali and today I'm going to present my solid state physics presentation regarding DIY salt crystal demonstration. Without further ado, let's get started. For the first slide, we are going to talk about salt crystal. So, usually we heard about the word crystal, isn't it? And we might be thinking it as of diamonds and probably minerals, right? But they just one kind of crystal. There are actually so many types of crystal structure. For example, we have salt crystal, we have snow crystal, and also graphite in our pencil too. Crystal or crystalline solid is just a material composed of the repeating unit, so-called the unit cells, which can be atoms, molecules, or ions which arrange in highly ordered configuration in a three-dimensional lattice pattern. Such regular arrangement gives crystal their characteristic in geometrical shape and symmetry. As a physical properties, crystal usually have a transparent look as well as having the regular shape, for example, the cubical, autorhombic, triclinic, and etc as well as symmetrical structure and very ordered arrangement or configuration. The next slide is the examples of the crystal system. We have so many types of crystal system. For example, we have cubic crystal system, autorhombic, monoclinic, hexagonal, trigonal, and so on. But the first picture is basically the normal table salt, which is the sodium chloride. The second one is actually the Epsom salt, or aka magnesium sulfate, having the autorhombic crystal structure. And the next is the nickel arsenide, having the hexagonal crystal structure. And last but not least is the potassium nitrate. The main concern in this video is basically to demonstrate the crystallization process of the Epsom salt as well as the table salt. Hence, the following scene shows the step-by-step -step procedures of the crystallization process. For the purpose of this demonstration, we would need materials such as the Epsom salt or magnesium sulfate, sodium chloride, or table salt, two glass of jars, a tablespoon, a petri dish, clipper, and a rope, and also don't forget our hot boiling water. First, I will transfer this salt into the plastic glass. The first step is to pour enough amount of hot boiling water into the glass jar. Next, put both types of salts into the glass jars using tablespoon. So I will do it for the table salt first. And stir it. Continue adding the salt until a saturated salt solution are produced, whereby no more salt particle can dissolve in hot water. By this point, we should stop adding the salt when the saturated solution is reached. Afterwards, we need to wait for several days, normally within only 2 days for Epsom salt and up to 1 week for the table salt to form a nice crystal lattice structure. Put it aside and we will be back for several days. Additionally, for the table salt, I will pour into the small petri dish right over here. So I will also hang the rope hold by the clipper right over here so that we can see the variation of the crystal formation by the salt so i will leave it aside for several days
This is the result of our salt after several days being left aside. As we can observe, the Epsom salt crystal is having a well-defined and long cuboid-like structure and looks like a sharp needle. But this structure usually known as orthorhombic crystal system which resulted from the stretching of a cubic lattice along two of its orthogonal paths. Meanwhile, for table salt crystal have a cubic shape with a clear cut faces and edges. Each face of the cubic is a plate, smooth surface and the edges are sharp and distinct. Its rebase lattice is face centered cubic or FCC which consists of atoms arranged in a cubic where each corner of the cube has a fraction of an atom with six additional full atoms positioned at the center of the cubic face. These crystals have a transparent and usually colorless appearance. Now, the main question arises. How does the salt crystallization process occurs? Well, crystallization can be thought of as solidification of a substance from solution in an orderly manner. Crystallization in NaCl or sodium chloride involves the dissolution of NaCl in a solvent such as water, whereby the ionic compound breaks apart into separated sodium Na plus and chloride Cl minus ions. As more NaCl is added or as the solvent evaporates, the concentration of dissolved ions increases, leading to a supersaturated solution. At this point, excess ions come together to form tiny clusters called nuclei through nucleation process. These nuclei serve as the starting points for crystal growth. Recall that ions of opposite charge strongly attract with each other, whereby those of like charges repel. Hence, reforming the ionic compound of NaCl back, but this time in orderly manner. As more ions attach to the nuclei, NaCl grows the crystal, aligning in a repeating lattice pattern dictated by the crystal structure. The crystal growth continues until the supply of dissolved NaCl diminish and the crystal solidifies fully. The similar process basically occurs in Epsom salt or magnesium sulfate too, whereby the cation is magnesium plus ion and an ion is sulfate ion. That is all for this video. Thank you for watching and hope you like this video. Goodbye.